Well said. Well said, Greg. I, I think one of the things that resonates with all of us with trading is uh, it's it can be a very lonely sport. Uh, for those of you that know a little bit of my background, I've, I've been teaching people how to trade uh, since I was 20, 21, and uh, it's, I'm 33 this year. So that's all I've done my entire adult life. And uh, I work from home, and, and so I don't get out very often. And, uh, you know, not like a person who works in a big office building. So that's one of the things I love about uh, technology and tackle trading and, and having a community is uh, you get a – you get to meet great people and uh, have people help motivate you. So we, we always hope that that's something that you get out of uh, out of our team here at Tackle. Um, X girl, hey, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. All right, guys. So here's what we got planned for tonight. We're going to start with the typical market skyline. Uh, Greg and I are going to walk through the market. Uh, quite the exciting uh, movements over the past week. Uh, kind of uh, got shaken out of the stupor the market's been in. So we'll do a quick run through the market skyline as usual. And then uh, Greg and I wanted to walk through some of the picks from our stock and options report and uh, help you guys kind of look over our shoulder and uh, I, I explain the rationale as to why we selected the stocks that we did. Um, for you newcomers, uh, we, we are always uh, sensitive to the fact that trading can be overwhelming. We encourage you to just stick with us, be patient, get engaged, and you will pick up things uh, sooner than later. I, I think all those that are here and have been here for a while can attest to that. If you stick around and you stay engaged, you will pick things up, no doubt about it. Okay, so I've got my screen up. Uh, can everybody see me okay? I think everybody can see me okay. Yes, yes, all right. Uh, Greg, let's go around the horn here, buddy. I'll, I'll let you uh, kick it off. Um, I will drive, but uh, tell me what you're thinking on the S&P. What's the takeaway from the week? Well, uh, you know, that uh, that large candle we had, what, uh, two, three days ago, uh, that makes a lot of folks nervous. Uh, it's, uh, you know, especially more so investor types than trader types. You know, those those bigger red candles give us a little bump in the VIX. And that gets uh, us traders excited for more premium in our options and a uh, little bit of volatility rushing back into the market. Uh, however, as we've seen this movie before, uh, back in May there, we saw the kind of similar action. Uh, even back uh, just before April there, we saw similar action. Uh, it seems like we've got a one-off candle here. Uh, we're pushing back up towards those highs again. I think we'll find some resistance up there. Uh, you got the spy on there. Say the 24.79.80 mark there. Uh, I guess that'd be 2.47. Um, but uh, yeah, I, it's, nothing's really changed, uh, although it, it may feel like it's changed. Really, we're still in a long-term uptrend. Uh, you know, we haven't had a real meaningful correction. Now, the only thing I would say about this recent candle. The first one you've got the arrow on, Tyler, is it did push down below the 50 MA, which uh, which was, you know, like I said, for a lot of folks, uh, a lot of investor types, they kind of see that as, you know, a bullish bearish line. Uh, and uh, for it to push down and close below that, uh, that that uh, that woke some people up, as you said, kind of got everybody out of the, the doldrums of the of the sideways market that we were seeing. So, um, like I said, until further notice, uh, we're still in an uptrend. This was a you know three-day pullback, uh, big gap up on the next, uh, well, it's the second day after that, and I expect that we're going to uh, try and push towards that resistance. Yeah, how how many were surprised by this big down day? Uh, what well, this was Thursday of last week. This is one of the largest down days we've seen uh, in oh a couple of months. I know for me, Greg, I, I got hit on my bullish positions uh, on Thursday quite a bit. And uh, so needless to say, this rebound has has uh, really helped uh, my personal portfolio. Um, I can imagine, though, if people got shaken out of bullish trades on Thursday and, and missed this bounce back, you know, that could be a little bit frustrating. Um, but this seems to be the tone of the tape. Uh, as Greg mentioned, we, we've got a lot of these V-shaped recoveries where the market freaks people out. And then, uh, you know, a couple of days later, it's like nothing happened. 
So one of the things that uh, I wrote about in this past weekend's options report for you pro members uh, is we talked about this. I, I highlighted some of the prior V reversals and gave kind of my outlook on what we might see. Um, also had some commentary on the VIX, which um, Greg mentioned. We, we had a big pop in the VIX, and that was part of the commentary. So uh, disaster averted for now. Uh, I think this rebound was impressive. Um, but because we did have a breakdown on Thursday, some of these other indexes still look a little vulnerable. Um, the weakest area we've seen was small caps. And I actually had this on the bear list uh, for the options report. Did you guys see how small caps were relatively weak today? You know, the, the rest of the market, the, the S&P was flat today. The NASDAQ was up a little bit. Um, but the Russell was down almost 1%. So pretty stark uh, relative weakness. Okay. Can everybody say that in the chat window? Relative weakness. Uh, this is a concept that we use a lot when we're looking at different stocks. Um, some stocks are stronger. Some stocks are weaker, you know, in comparison. So relative weakness is, is something that has been uh, really plaguing the uh, small caps for quite a while. Um, now, here's the thing. If you were going to uh, short the market this week because it bounced after last week's big sell-off, do you think it's more attractive to short, that is go bearish on a relatively weak index? or try to short the strongest index in the market? Yeah, I agree. I, I tend to, I tend to, you know, kind of punish uh, weakness and reward strength, right? So this is one thing that I outlined in the options report. And, and I think this is actually a perfect case study of, of how we're trying to give you actionable Intel actionable content with these with these monthly reports or weekly reports, excuse me. And so one thing I outlined uh, over the weekend was how small caps had dropped all the way to that 200 day moving average. We had a lot of distribution, a lot of high volume selling. And then this relative strength indicator you could see was at a two month low. OK, and I know I'm jumping ahead here a little bit, but you can see in the bear watch for this week, IWM was one of those ticker symbols for that very reason. It was one of the biggest ones that broke down, had one of the worst sell offs. And, um, you know, I was expecting typically when you have a big high volume sell off, usually the next rally fails. OK, so how many think today would have been a good day to maybe enter a bear trade in IWM? You think today, I mean, if you, so if you're looking, if you're looking at IWM coming into this week, you can see it's, you know, it had three pretty decent sized red candles, hit the 200 day moving average. And I'm thinking, okay, if this thing, if this thing rolls over, I want to go ahead and get in it, right? Uh, if, 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 uh, if it bounces first. And I don't know if you guys can see the chat window. I think you might have got, uh, I think we might have, uh, let me switch that around. Can you, I don't, let's see. Can you guys see the chat window now? I'm going to make that a little smaller. We got moved around there a little bit. All right. You know, we're just, uh, we're just moving things around on you guys. Just trying to keep it lively here. There we go. There we go. Okay. So anyways, th this is one takeaway, I think, to the options report. We were anticipating small caps would rally and then fail, and we saw that today. Um, but you had to be quick on the trigger. I mean, you'll notice if, if you looked at this last night, you said, oh, I got two big up candles. Maybe I got to wait for you know, a reversal candle, right? Maybe we come back on Tuesday night, see if the, uh, we see a doji candle or maybe a reversal candle, and then I go bearish. Well, you didn't you didn't really get that today, did you? You know, small caps actually gapped up this morning and sold off all day long. So sometimes, you know, you got to be quick on the trigger uh, when, when these reversals come. But um, I, I don't know where we go from here. But but IWM is definitely the weakest index. Um, to me, this rally was a short, and and we we pretty much nailed that in the options report. Okay. 
So, um, Greg, let me put you on the spot. What would you say to the question, why are we seeing weakness in small caps? Well, uh, my first instinct is to say that uh, we are still, we're, we're getting the tail end of earnings season. And I've been watching the earnings uh, quite a bit. And I know that uh, a number of companies, smaller cap companies, have been getting, you know, pretty hammered on their earnings right now. There's been a lot of, you know, you go okay. you go to the heat maps, there's been a fair number of uh, red boxes versus green boxes. And so when you get, uh, you know, obviously there's 2,000 stocks in the Russell, so it's not going to be just, you know, one or two stocks that, that's going to bring it down. But uh, when you get a lot of earnings coming out and, you, you, you know, you have less than, less than stellar results, uh, that's, that's going to create a, create a move, right? Um, so I, I would say that's probably what I'm seeing right now. Um, overall, I think, you know, the, the, the last run up in the Russell was a little bit frothy as well. Uh, I think that's, uh, you know, it, it had a significant run down recently, but uh, I thought it was pretty high at one point as well. So that's kind of where I see okay. it right now. 